video. It's already the fourth vlog in this butter book drafting series, writing the butter book, whatever. I've still not figured out what to call it. It doesn't matter. I thought today would be fun to answer some questions, which I meant to answer last time and I totally forgot. But now we have a bunch that we can cover and I'll catch you up on how it's going so far and just some first draft thoughts because there's always things that I'm learning with every new book. Okay, first, where are we at right now? I'm just gonna show you my pacemaker like tracking online and I feel silly because I'm not an affiliate for them. I just happen to be using it and it's really fun. So I will of course link this video if you wanna know more, but I don't like how tiny this is, but up at the top there, you can see it says 16,870 words so far out of my 50K like goal, which is not, does not have to be 50K. We'll see what it is. I think it might actually be 50K though. Because if you know the pacing of Save the Cat, which I love, you don't have to like it, but I love it. And it helps me kind of know if the story's dragging in places, if it's going too fast. So I have a feeling if I'm around the, say, 30, 35% mark, I don't know. I'm not a math person here. Anybody want to predict what my exact word count might be at the end of the first draft? Let me know. But there's always the possibility, of course, that I might, you know, overwrite or underwrite in certain areas of the book. Like if I don't know what's going on in the middle and I just sort of like skip things, I'm like, I'll fill it in later. Or really, really overwrite like the climax. I don't know. Who knows? Usually it's the other way around, actually. I probably overwrite the middle and I'm like, by the end, I'm like, I just need to get through it. <laughs> but yeah, it's just a first draft. So we'll see what happens. I just kind of think 50 K might be accurate this time around. Started out in July, moved into August. And as you can see there, I had a 10 day streak. So I was getting ready to record this video. I was like, I'm going to say, don't break the chain or whatever that saying is that originated with email chains. And then people made it funny of like, don't break the chain, keep going like every day, just a little bit. And then the last day there, 148. And I was just burnt. I was like, okay, I'm pushing myself. I'm just going to actually take that Friday there off. And of course the weekend off too, because there was so much I didn't know. And so I wasn't truly taking it off. I was making this um, like butter book world document where I'm just kind of brainstorming a very specific location <laughs> that I'm starting out in. I saved some Pinterest pictures. I actually saved a lot more on Pinterest, but these ones I just like, I want to reference some, you know, like specifically like say the fireplace in this room or the way the bed is in this room, something, something like that. I feel like I was still working. I just wasn't getting any words in. I was brainstorming that whole weekend. And then check this out. You can see that it paid off right there on Monday, which was yesterday. I wrote 2,336 words. For those of you who love word count, I'm pretty sure the last vlog ended on Saturday, I think. But as you can see, I was like, I'm just going to keep writing on the weekends and I want to catch up, which was really fun. I was feeling motivated, so why not? And Sunday, I also wrote. And the nice thing about those two days is I did not reach the word count goal of 1,100 or whatever it was at the time. But it still caught me up because I was writing on a day that I had blocked off as a not writing day. Win-win. <laughs> like it feels really good to actually make any progress. Even if I'd written a hundred words, I'd been like, that was a win because it wasn't even a writing day. I got ahead. And then Monday, I started strong with 1,332. Tuesday, you'll notice a phenomenon that happens after a good writing day. Very often I'll have like a less good writing day after and I just kind of expect that kind of a reference back to that video we talked about expectations. <laughs> Wednesday was such a good day. I had help. My mom was watching my little guy and I just spent a good two hours solid writing. So I got 1,940. And then like you saw the last day there, Thursday, 148 words. Cause I was just like, yeah, no, I'm done. But what did I actually write in the story? Cause you guys know the outline. So I can kind of reference things now. And I'm trying to remember where I left off. I can tell you what I wrote yesterday though, the day where I wrote 2,336 words, which ended up being 10 whole pages in the document. I was shocked. I was like, I don't think I've written this much in a long, long, long time. It probably a year. <laughs> All right. This might overlap with the last vlog a little bit, but she had basically found out that Faye existed, right? I remember her saying that in the last vlog. Oh yeah, and then I had the awesome, awesome survey through my newsletter where you guys were helping me try to decide things like how exactly does she make deals with the Faye? Does she only make them with a love interest? Does she make them, you know, a bunch of them or does she just make one and then she learns her lesson and what is the deal and what are the consequences if they don't keep it up? So there was a lot of decisions to be made that I've implemented. Oh, it's been so much fun so far and I haven't even done most of them yet. I've just done a few. But what I did is I had 
uh, the main guy, who I'm kind of leaning towards calling him Soren. We'll see. Riven is still good. Somebody mentioned, you know, his nickname could be Vin, which still makes me think of like Vin Diesel, but whatever. <laughs> it makes me laugh. Uh, whatever we end up calling him, I was like, okay, he is going to like offer her a deal, but she's not going to accept it right away because we want her to at least be a little bit aware that trusting a stranger is not so good. She doesn't have trust naturally anyway, so it makes sense for the Enneagram 8 character to be like, Ugh. No, I can figure this out on my own. Thank you. <laughs> it's very in character. I love writing an Enneagram 8, by the way, because all I got to do is think, what would my husband do? <laughs> and it's like, okay, here we go. She's very much trying to do things on her own. She's going to start exploring the Fey world, but quickly realize that she's out of her depth. There's a lot of instances where as she's kind of like trying to figure out where her family might have gone. She's realizing just how big this world is because as we talked about in the outlining process, we were like, okay, so they're living underground, kind of Hobbit style, kind of tunnel style, just like a different take on Fae than you typically see. Although I have seen Fae underground, so that's not true, is it? Anyhow, <laughs> that's not the point. The point is we voted in the live streams and I really like that vote. I think at one point we talked about maybe having the other court live like above ground, like in the trees but right now they're all like below and there's kind of like a main uh, I'm trying to think how we described it I think we picture like a redwood that's just like bigger than all the other trees it's actually like a fey tree but it looks just similar to a redwood so it's like this is the entrance you recognize it from above ground there's other entrances too so I wrote her exploring that world and that was one of the reasons I had some struggle days because I'm like I don't know what it looks like and I had to do some brainstorming then I just got so much inspiration and I was having so much fun having her go be sneaky and sneak back into we're just gonna call him Soren for right now because I like that name Soren's home and he when he's called away okay that's a lot of details that had to go into that to make that seem natural and hopefully it will it's an editing problem as soon as I got her into his house and she's like on a mission to kind of find out what he knows about her family there's some reason she thinks he knows stuff that I won't go into then I got stuck again because I was like wait a minute what the heck does his house look like and I actually had pretty much every time I laid down to like take a nap at night uh, when I woke up in the middle of the night and I couldn't sleep I was just like laying there trying to picture his place and I had so many fun ideas come to me about like what the different characters rooms might look like and how they're kind of like the friend show it's sort of like they're in an apartment together but it's not an apartment it's different but I'm just pulling some of those elements from our favorite things like the friend show and then pulling in the library elements and we're gonna pull in her um what's that trope that we called it staying in someone's home without them knowing. I can't remember if that's exactly what we called it, but I'm about to write that part today. I have bullet point outlined it, just like I talk about in this video, and it's so exciting. I can't wait to write the scene because I'm just so excited. Like I already know how I wanna foreshadow her leaving little hints that the guy Soren is going to realize she's there, but he's not gonna say anything. So she thinks she's being sneaky. She thinks she's getting away with it. And actually she's not even trying to stay there the very first night. The first time she's actually just gonna kind of get trapped <laughs> and they're gonna come back from where they were. She's gonna be stuck and have to hide. And then she's going to be like listening in on a conversation they have and just kind of like fall asleep because their talking takes so long and whatever they're scheming about. <laughs> so many fun details. I just, oh, I could talk about this story forever, but I need to write it. So I'm just gonna stop myself and say, that's what I'm writing today. Of course, there's still a bunch of gaping holes. Like what are they scheming about? I still don't know exactly what their plan <laughs> to take over the court is. I don't know what their heist is or their con or whatever it's gonna end up being. So that might kind of have to be one that I just put in brackets and I write, figure this scene out later. I've done that two or three times so far, it's fine. It's just a first draft, you don't have to know everything. But it probably will end up being something I need to know sooner rather than later, right? Then the other thing that just hit me last night and I decided to do a fun poll on Instagram, I was like, what if there were two POVs? because I know how funny it is to me that Soren, the love interest, knows that she's there. And I just think it would be fun for the reader to see him like discovering, you know, the door she left open and this thing that she left behind and then her like leg sticking out slightly or something like that from under a table, I don't know. But it's not very common in fantasy. And where'd I put my phone? Somebody also pointed out that it's not 
always is clear in first person, which is what I'm writing. I'll put the poll on the screen here and you guys can vote in the comments too. A lot of people were like, this would be so helpful. <laughs> One person said what I mentioned where it's like, well, if it's third person, that's gonna be different than first person. And I love this point. I wanna watch them fall in love and maybe think the other doesn't feel the same way. So it kind of would show them falling in love, which I think is why a lot of the rom-coms, like contemporary ones, typically do show dual POV. And I actually realized in this series, I have dual POV. I'm pretty sure even in the first book, but now I'm not sure. Let me check. Okay, yeah, I have two POVs even in this first book. So I think the trick with that is something that I'm still growing at, but I tried really hard to do in this series and I can continue to work hard at if I do it in the butter book, is making sure they both have very distinct voices. So you know exactly who it is. And the last point somebody made was that it depends, and I won't share anybody's names in case you don't want me to share, but I just wanted to shout out these people and say thank you. So I wouldn't have thought of them, but it says it would depend on if it spoils any upcoming surprises, which is a very good point because it does kind of spoil a surprise. It's so it's sort of a toss up of do I want the reader to enjoy knowing the whole time? Which Abby Emmons actually talks about this, how if a reader is in on something that the characters don't even know, that can actually be more enjoyable to read. However, in other instances, if the reader gets surprised by it, which we talked about in the live streams, like a very big plot twisty twisty thing at the end, then that's actually really, really fun for the readers as well. So far in the vote, it looks like it's a really big majority that wants two POVs. So I will let you vote and add your two cents. And while you're doing that, let's actually do the other two votes too, because you guys were sad. There was a couple comments in the last video where I had done that newsletter survey and you were like, well, I wanted to vote in the survey too, but it was already closed. So I'm like, why not do one publicly in this YouTube video? So this is going to be like a mini survey. Okay. The first question, of course, like you saw was, do we have dual POV? knowing what we know about like that will give away some things, but it could be fun to know as the reader. Or do we do um, single POV and you don't find out how he feels, the things that he knows until she finds out? <laughs> That's the first question. The second question is one that actually was asked over on Instagram and I wanted to shout out this reader as well. She said, have you decided to keep the cozy slash comedy aspect or not? Just curious and so hyped for this book. I watched all the planning videos, sounds right up my alley. So. Thank you, Lizzie. I'm so excited. I want it to be cozy. I want it to be funny. I, those are still what I want. However, looking at the plot that we described where her family gets taken, literally taken away, kidnapped. She's chasing them down in a very high stress environment, not sure if she's gonna find her own family ever again. Does that sound like low stakes to you? Because <laughs> I realized I was like, crap, I think that's pretty high stake, which is good for fantasy, but not a cozy fantasy. Cozy is supposed to be, from what I'm gathering, there's a lot of different descriptions, of course. You might have a different definition and that's fine. But from what I'm gathering, it means low stakes. It's not gonna stress a reader out. There's not gonna be anything like huge happening. It can still be like entertaining. They still have problems, of course. You don't want them to just be skating through. Nothing's happening. There's no story there, but it should be low stakes. And I'm thinking the story kind of sounds high stakes. <laughs> so question number two, do you think this could still be a cozy or not? And oh, question number three, would it be okay to be a comedy, even if it's not cozy, even if it is more high stakes, can I keep it funny? Cause I've kind of been trying to keep it funny and I've been having a really good time with that, but it could change during edits and we'll see. <laughs> oh, and then I have to see if I can still find the YouTube comments, but there were, I think two different people. If I can find them, I'll put them on the screen where they commented that this sounds like a portal fantasy in the last vlog. And I was like, interesting. This will be our final poll because they were saying like, hey, if you're, not sure readers will follow through to the fantasy portion of the book. If you call it a portal fantasy, they might have more patience to know like, hey, the fantasy is coming. They're in contemporary world, then they're gonna like kind of portal through into another world at some point. And I was like, well, it kind of counts as a portal because kind of picture Alice in Wonderland style. She's like fallen into a hole <laughs> in the ground and she's gonna be in the fey world. And funny enough, I don't have the secret gift with me. I don't think it's not in this room, but the secret gift I'll put on the screen is actually a portal fantasy as well. <laughs> so I've actually written this before, but that's a actual portal. I don't know. Let me know what you think. That one's the one I'm the least sure about. <laughs> but of course it's not necessary to know right now. It's just fun to talk about. Okay. Let me get a little bit of writing done and then we'll come back and answer a few more questions. <laughs>
could put it into pacemaker right here, but I'm considering trying to write again, maybe at the gym. It's not super comfortable, but I'm in the mood to keep going. And then my little guy can play with his friends and I can get a little more writing done. So I'm gonna hold off on updating it because look at how much I still have bullet point outlined that I could write today. And then I could brainstorm some more. I'm just really excited. I wanna keep going. But so far in the doc, including all this bullet point outline, of course, I have almost 18,000 words. Of course, the bullet point outline is almost 700. So let's say closer to 17,000 words, probably. And because I know from experience, you guys are gonna ask, this is just Word, Microsoft Word. I write in a pre-formatted template because it makes it feel more like a book to me. And I will link my video on Word and my video on formatting if you wanna know more about that because I love writing in Word. This just makes me happy because this is the size of the book pages. So I know roughly how many pages the book is actually gonna be here too. About 78 pages so far, you know, counting again my notes. <laughs> I'm having more and more of a hard time doing these vlogs because I'm 22 weeks pregnant now and it's not even halfway but I'm already just like out of breath when I'm talking to you. <laughs> you can probably tell. I don't know what to do about it besides you know pause to breathe. You can't really tell because I'm wearing black but I'm just like oh I feel like a beached whale honestly. I just feel huge and I know that's normal with a second kid. You get bigger faster and I know getting bigger is normal in general. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? I get that. Plus, I am trying to be healthy and exercise more and be more active and fit. So I'm not really asking for advice so much as telling you my insecurities about vlogging and how I just feel huge. <laughs> and really uncomfortable, honestly. But anyway, let's come to the questions that you guys have because there were some really good ones. Aria said, love the live streams for outlining and the current videos on the writing vlogs. Thanks for sharing your journey. I'd love to hear more about your world building process. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. I love talking about world building. Whether you're fantasy or even contemporary, there's always a lot to the world that can almost make it feel like an extra character. And when I first started out, I used to try to do those stupid questionnaires no offense to anybody who uses them, but they did not work for me. And what I found, my biggest tip about world building is that it becomes memorable and important and interesting to the readers when it's relevant to the story itself or to the characters themselves, either way. For example, when I was doing some world building for this, um, I still don't know what to call it, like this like kind of fey lair <laughs> underground, like hobbit hole style thing where this friend group is all staying. I was like, well, what is actually important to share? I don't wanna go and like list everything that's in the room. I want it to be relevant. So to do that, I showed how one character's room was very simple. It had a single bed. There were no shoes to be found anywhere. And these elements show things about his character that actually reveal things to the reader. Like he's not frivolous. He's probably not entertaining much with a single bed. And the lack of shoes is actually because he has hooves. So it's kind of foreshadowing that. And you're going to find that out. Another character's room where she walks across the hall, it's in direct contrast to his where it has like mirrors everywhere, which shows the guy's very vain, but also kind of points out the other guy didn't have any. And why was that? And that's going to be relevant too because he doesn't like how he looks. He's got a massive bed, he's got a big fireplace, he's got blankets, he's got candles everywhere. So there's like hints of a lot of romance going on in that room and he's kind of generally focused on his looks with all his fancy clothes. So that's just like a really rough example based on a first draft. I am not an expert at world building by any means but I have found that it's just way more fun to me and I think to the reader as well when it's relevant. That's my ultimate tip. But I do have a ton more videos where I talked about this because again, I love talking world building. So I will link those videos below if you want more from me on that. Scarlett Larson says, I wanna go back and watch how the butter book came to be. And I'd love to hear small excerpts and overall where the story is going. So, okay, first of all, I am trying to link this um, kind of outline video that sums up the story where we left off after outlining. I'll link that below. Because then instead of watching 10 hours of live streams, unless you wanna watch us actually discover things live, you can kind of just get the 30 minute summary video. There was another request for excerpts from Courtney as well. 
and I kind of shared some character info, but I think I will share excerpts. But as far as like overall where the story is going, <laughs> I'm really excited to say I'm right in the middle, maybe more towards the beginning of the fun and games story beat, which is so much fun. I actually pull up my outline. Here's the funny thing. I write outlines, but then I don't always reference them. Let me know if you're that way. It's really funny. And normally my outlines are like one page, you know, with like a sentence for each of the 15 story beats. So I don't have to remember a lot. I think I just keep it up here after I outline it. But since we have like 50 pages worth in our Butterbook brainstorming document, I should probably check it out. So the fun and games beat, we've got her sneaking in to the fairy court, finding a place to stay. She's met the love interest. I put in our notes in the Butterbook document that it's a possible place for touch her and die, but no, that's not going to happen yet. I think I've got a place for that down the road that's going to fit way better. And then she's going to start meeting the like friends characters in Soren's like friend group. I'm going to have to start revealing their schemes and start getting to know what their goals are. And I need to just get to know those individual Fae a lot better. So I think I'm going to have to have another brainstorming day after this. But at some point, very soon, she's been trying to find her family. She's been failing. Things aren't going well. And she's going to give in and make a deal with Soren, the first of many. <laughs> and then start finding her family's trail somehow. So I think there's a lot more that's gonna be in this beat. I don't know, I have a feeling there's a lot more because this is just gonna be such a fun story beat. I think what I'm gonna end up doing is in edits, I'm gonna to have to flesh out the setup section of the book a lot more, but this fun and games beat just feels like there's so much to tell and I'm gonna be spending a lot of time here. As far as excerpts, okay, I'm gonna give in and show you, what should I show you? If I show you this, we have to make a pact, okay? You are not allowed to judge me based on my first draft because I have fully like edited and published books out there. This is literally just a first draft, just my brain coming out onto the page, kind of messy, probably not what it's actually gonna be in the end at all. Like I'm actually very curious. I'm gonna share it just for funsies because I'm like, what if some of this ends up staying? Even if it's just like one sentence, I don't know, but I, I'm looking at it and I'm already embarrassed of the writing because it's just stream of consciousness writing. It's not perfect, okay? Keep that in mind. Okay, one last disclaimer before I show you. My goal when I wrote this was to show her character right from the get-go, like her personality on the page, her Enneagram 8-ness, and then what we had brainstormed in the outline of the funny fight. I ended up coming up on the other side of the funny fight, so she's super pissed off and she's gonna be explaining why on like the second and third page. I don't know if this is gonna work because it makes sense to me, but it might not make sense to readers, okay? Keep that in mind. I stormed up the sidewalk toward the corner house on our street with my blood boiling so hot I could almost see the steam rising off me in the December air. Determined to give Mrs. B a piece of my mind, I leapt up the three stone steps to her home and pounded on that stupid robin's egg blue door with my fist and also my foot for good measure. Old lady, I don't know what her name's gonna be. <laughs> her head peered out through her bay window across the street at the racket. I just rolled my eyes Ugh, and I used the word just too much in my drafts. Just know that I'm aware. I'm going to be deleting. I'm going to delete it right now. <laughs> I rolled my eyes. She thought she could intimidate me into being embarrassed. Think again. Instead of pretending not to see her, I turned to stare directly at her while continuing to knock. With a huff, she flung her curtain shut. Mrs. B, I yelled, not caring that my voice carried on the quiet winter air. I know you're in there. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That's that's the first little first page. I'm flustered because I don't know. <laughs> okay, and here's one other excerpt that I think is just entertaining. It's right when she's meeting the love interest, okay? And she just fell into the Fae world through the whole kind of Alice in Wonderland style. The guy drew my attention back to him. Perhaps next time you should use the stairs. <laughs> stairs, I scoffed, flinging an arm at the giant hole above us as I glared at him. You're joking, right? There's no... St I cut off abruptly. Well, would you look at that? There really were stairs circling along the side of the dirt wall from the hole all the way down to where I was sprawled gracelessly on the ground. Oh, I finished what would have been a really good rant on a bit of a flat note. <laughs> There's my other weakness right there. I'm just gonna like point it out because I feel like it's so noticeable. Really, really long sentences. That's another first draft thing I do and I'm aware of it. And you know, sometimes you just gotta let things happen. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta like write the sentence that is actually gonna be three or four sentences later when you get to edits and you break it up. Sometimes I'll go back to read my writing the day after and I'll do a little tweaking then and break up some sentences then so it's a little less work to do later. But sometimes I just am like, whatever, I'll fix that in edits. You know what I mean? <laughs> First drafts are not about being perfect. There was also a question on, I think it was 
email that I got this one from Kay. Loving this new book and the YouTube videos. I have a question for your Q&A. How do you incorporate universal fantasies into each chapter? I bought the book, but not sure how to apply the knowledge. The book that Kay is talking about, let me show you, is this one right here. And I'm gonna admit to you that I'm having the same problem <laughs> because it feels like once you meet the love interest, once you get into the fun and games, specifically fun and games, and maybe like climax, really anything after the fun and games, it feels like it's so much easier to put universal fantasies in. I think I talked about this a little bit in the last vlog, but I can't remember. So I might be rehashing things a little, but here's my thought process. I was thinking, say you've got your really big overarching universal fantasy, maybe enemies to lovers for this book. The found family for sure is a trope in this one. Yeah, just things like that. We'll just start there. So I was talking to my critique partner and I'm like, I just don't know because she hasn't met the love interest. So how am I supposed to show enemies to lovers? She hasn't met the friend group. How do I show found family? How do I show this, 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 this? And she was like, well, maybe you kind of hint at it by contrasting that, how did, how did Brittany say it? That you don't, that she doesn't want it or the lack of it maybe. And so like for the love side of things, I kind of had her be frustrated with her dad's romantic stuff and be like, you know, this isn't gonna work out. What is the point? Like she has no belief in love whatsoever. So that's kind of contrasting that she's going to hopefully <laughs> find love, right? And then with the found family, she's kind of like bossing around her family a lot, honestly. They're not a bad family though, but I think she's going to find family in this friend group in a much more healthy way because they're not gonna let her boss them around. So that's my thought process so far, but that might be a question we should hold off and talk about down the road because I'm not sure I truly know the answer yet. And gosh, it'd be fun to like pick Theodora Taylor's brain on this because that's honestly my question too. It's like, how do you actually come up with a chapter by chapter universal fantasy specifically in the beginning? <laughs> anyway, I have to call it for right now because my little guy is waking up from his nap but i was thinking because i'm so excited about writing this might be one of the days that i go and write at the gym and take advantage of the child care there i know i actually kind of thought this might be a thing today because i was so excited about what i'm about to write that i actually did a little workout at home in the morning with my little guy he kind of kind of joined in sort of and then that way i don't feel guilty about not working out when I'm at the gym later. <laughs> but as far as things that I'm noticing this vlog that might encourage you if you're also writing first draft and honestly will encourage me if I come back to watch this is once again, I am noticing that the writing muscle gets stronger. It's funny because I was just talking about the gym and working out. So writing is a different kind of working out where you do get faster and you get into it faster and you come up with ideas faster and just things go more smoothly the more you practice it the more consistently you show up and honestly i can see that in my word count like with this vlog i probably only had a chance to write for 20 minutes and i wrote over 700 words that would not have happened when i first started <laughs> and i can just see myself getting faster and faster as time goes on but i'm gonna admit to you that i also see no matter how much i do this no matter how many days i've put in I'm on day 19 now apparently, I still procrastinate. I still find reasons not to sit down and I get a little bit of that fear of starting and that I have to address it and just sit down. And right now in this current like week or two of writing, I've noticed that my Spotify playlist gets me excited to write. So sometimes just putting that on as I sit down, maybe I do other things, but I'm like, ooh, this makes me feel like writing. And then secondly, reading through what I wrote the day before has been a really, really big trigger to get my brain into story mode and get me wanting to write. I'll just be like, oh, I don't feel like writing. I don't want to do this. So I'll start reading that little last bit that I wrote. 10% of the time, I'm like, ew, this did not go well. I need to rewrite it and I'll have to do that. But the other 90% of the time, I'll be like, most of this was pretty good. And now I'm excited and now I want to write what comes next. So I feel like that's been working for me. I just wanted to share that. <sighs> I'm just not a natural vlogger. So if there's anything that you want to know specific to this story or about life in general, anything you want to talk about, let me know. And I will see you guys in the next one.